is Sister Danger. Uh, this is going to be a response to your video. I really appreciated your thoughtfulness and the time you put into that video. And I'm sorry I have not commented in the comment section. I just kind of wanted to collect my, my thoughts, figure out a, 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 an approach. So first things first, uh, that video really was just um, a, like a, a splash commentary on what I think the Democrats uh, and the political form of the left in America are just getting wrong and have tons of blind spots. And you just have so much groupthink going on there that like a voice like mine or a perspective like mine, it, it can almost like completely be discarded from the conversation. And it's, you know, just like every political ideology has this, just major blind spots creep up. And I just see them all over the place with the left. And that was predominantly the point of that video, which is an, an analysis. Uh, obviously a hostile analysis is somebody that doesn't want the left to succeed, but nonetheless an analysis that I think at the very least can honor things that otherwise just aren't there. You know, if left to their own thinking, it's just Russia 24 seven and everybody involves a Nazi. And I mean, all I'm trying to say there with that video is there's a ton of things or self response. There's a uh, responsibility. There's, you know, introspection that needs to happen, self-correction. That was predominantly the point of that video. But I did use the immigration issue as a point, as a point of reference to do that. That being said, your video predominantly dealt with immigration. And I like that. I don't like how thoughtful you were about it. And big surprise, we don't completely see eye to eye. But that issue is extremely nuanced. And that issue almost never gets you know, the adult conversation that it deserves with a panoramic view and really think about all the things that go into that issue. I guess the first thing I want to start with is there's two issues I think that kind of transcend your normal political squabbles. At least this is the way I look at it. They're the issues of immigration and abortion. And the reason I think they do is because they're very, very human issues. So in both cases, you're dealing with an enormous amount of emotion, human skin in the game, quite literally, no pun intended, because you're talking about human beings, you're talking about life. And no matter how you, you look at that, that just changes them from, say, like economic disagreements or whatever. But I think it's just very, very emotionally potent in the issue of immigration and abortion. And I also think those two issues are the ones that animate the younger generation, the generation hard on our heels the most. And I actually think that's quite admirable. Um, even if I disagree with the particulars of opinion on that. When you think about immigration, what tends to happen, you get so bogged down in the very real and appropriate emotional high stakes poker, if you will, that you don't do the same, not you, this is the individual, the general individual, doesn't do the 360 with their mind, doesn't, doesn't take all of the information in. Because if you were to do that, there's many ways, there's many ways to approach this situation with moral intentions, not just one way. And a lot of times, my big frustration with the left in a, in a host of ways, in a host of, surrounding a host of issues, is that you can't have dialogue with them because only one solution is moral. All other solutions, you just assume are coming from some scumbag, knuckle-drag, Neanderthal, scum of the earth, whatever, fill in the blank. And of course, that's not a conversation at that point. Everybody's on their heels. I mean, and you don't have to listen to that, right? Because it's got some scumbag. So that's generally a, 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 an overriding frustration with me in, in dialogues like this. But if you were to assume that their opinions are being formed on moral grounds as well, and if you look at the issue as like a mountain, Whereas maybe you want to go over it, somebody else wants to wants to go uh, around it, whatever the case may be. That's a better way, I think, to have the discussion. With the issue of immigration, you have, you know, the iceberg part that you can see, which is like this big, and then the huge, massive iceberg under the water, which almost gets no attention, almost never gets dealt with, but is the actual issue of immigration. Okay, so with that being said, my opinion on immigration, I think, is actually the most moral. And I'm going to make my case for that. 
what you have in the in the headline splash last couple weeks is you have um, something that's going to grab the attention of the apathetic and something that's going to polarize and dehumanize the president and the people who support the president so on and so forth um, and for that reason it was very pointed purposeful and partisan and truth was never the intention with that. And, and in the previous video, what I pointed out was, there's no intellectual honesty here, because although it is true, you point this nuance out in your video, it is true that, you know, the, the window drapings on the issue have changed with Donald Trump in the sense that he's enforcing more strictly and so on, so on and so forth. This issue itself with holding tanks and just the mess of trying to maintain a border when you have a flood of illegal immigration that's been with us for for a very very long time and and those pictures of like children in warehouses and children being mulled across the border all those things are horrific and have for a fact been going on for a very very long time and that was my point we've had this, this situation going on for four years now and and for some reason we haven't fixed it I, I don't think you can necessarily blame it on one administration or the other uh, it started under one and it's continuing under under another. It, it hasn't it hasn't been fixed and, and it needs to be fixed. What you wanted to do there and you did it properly was put your attention on the differences in this particular instance as it's manifesting under the Trump administration. But my point is, is that this level of hyperbolic um, hysterics is very convenient. It's not as though this applies to everybody, but a ton of people who are gleaning onto this issue of kids, but the kids, the separation, this is what it boils down to. They have policy disagreement with the president. They don't like right-wing policy. They don't want right-wing policy. They don't want right-wing economic policy, social policy, uh, geopolitical policy, foreign policy, whatever. They don't like any of that. And most of the time, there's nothing of traction for them to sort of move the needle on. This issue, because it's heightened emotions, because it's human beings, because it's kids, because it's all this stuff. They throw this magnifying glass on this issue and they just keep stirring and stirring and stirring with the attention, with the intention of actually derailing much bigger things than this issue. It's just a, a conduit to that. And, and I know that and, and politically savvy people know that. And that's just politics. That's just politics 101. What we're doing here is we're, we're forgetting about all that, hopefully, and we're just going to talk about the actual issue of illegal immigration. I, I don't think everybody understands what's actually happening down here. You know, you have a lot of these kids that, that are coming here and put through through terrible, terrible situations by their parents. They are, they are brought over in extremely dangerous conditions and an extremely dangerous terrain. And all this can be avoided if they just go through the port of entry. There would be no crime uh, committed by them and they wouldn't get separated. Why they don't do this is beyond me. Um, but this problem is very easily solved, at least uh, on the short term basis, by going through the port of entry. If they choose to go through the river, they're committing a crime just like anyone else. They're subject to arrest. And we all know when you get arrested, you don't get to stay with your family. It's just it's just the sad reality of life. We've had this, this situation going on for four years now, and, and for some reason we haven't fixed it. I, I don't think you can necessarily blame it on one administration or the other. Uh, it started under one and it's continuing under under another. It, it hasn't it hasn't been fixed and, and it needs to be fixed. And if, if you guys have seen some of the stuff that we've seen down here, um, you would understand just how important it is to, to have a tough stance to divert people from coming here uh, when you see a 12-year-old girl with a Plan B pill or with uh, their, their parents put her on birth control because they know that's getting violated as part of the journey, that's just a oh. terrible way to live. When you see a 4-year-old girl traveling completely alone with just her parents' phone number written across her shirt, I mean, come on now, you know, something needs to be done. We, we had a 9-year-old boy last year have a heat stroke and die in front of us uh, with no family around. And, and that's because we're allowing people to continue to take advantage of this system. And, and let's, let's be honest here, if, if we want this law changed, then we need to, that, that's on Congress, that's on, on nobody else but Congress. They need to come in there, they need to get to work and they need to change this law. Until then, uh, us as Border Patrol agents, we have a duty to, to uh, enforce these laws and, and we'll continue to do it and, until uh, they change this law and hopefully they will. And nobody saves more lives along the southwestern border than the U.S. Border Patrol. And I can tell you for a fact, uh, one of the worst things that you would ever have to do is have to uh, pull the body of a young kid out of the river because they were crossing it and they just mm. didn't make it. So something needs to change so we can we can avoid 
uh, some of these tragedies that happen. Granted, having these kids in detention centers, obviously it's not ideal, but um, yeah. it's, it's, it's far better than, than the alternative of a lot of these kids not making it. It is a law and, and the law needs to be enforced. Regardless, if we don't like what, a law, what we just can't decide law? which law we're going. Uh, as far as if you come across that river illegally, you're subject to arrest and, and the prosecution, and you will get arrested and you will get prosecuted. Not every family is getting separated. Um, some are, some aren't. It depends on, on the, the circumstances. If you have a criminal history, uh, for instance, just a couple of days ago, we caught a, uh, a guy coming across with his uh, five-year-old daughter, um, and we had to separate that family. Reason being, he had a criminal conviction, and he was subject to prosecution. He had a criminal conviction for, uh, for, for rape here in the United mm -hmm. States. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we obviously we wouldn't want that guy walking free, but and I don't what see anybody to his up in daughter? arms over that one. She, got, she gets placed in a, in a center until they can find some family that they can place her with, whether it's here in the United States or, or back in her home country. And, and you know, another thing that, that we look at is we get all the time, daily, that, that people are claiming to be family units and they're not. Um, and that's very dangerous for these kids. If we don't find those, I mean, what can come of those kids once this adult uh, doesn't have the need for this child anymore? And I think the other thing that, that needs to be looked at here is we do have a lot of unaccompanied children coming over. And the fact remains is the parents are already here in the United States and they're sending for these kids. And these kids are traveling solo across uh, two or three countries. And when they get here, they're reunited with your, the families. And uh, to me, that, 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 that's mind blowing because you can't do that as a United States citizen. You can't send your, your five-year-old kid to, to ride on top of a train through three states. And when they get there, they're coming back to you. You'd get prosecuted. Yet uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, uh, illegal families, we, we put on the, the, the kid gloves with them and we don't, we don't look out for the best interest of this child. And that's another thing that needs to be changed. So what you have is economic policies and corruption, predominantly in Latin America, but obviously this is happening in the third world and everywhere in the globe. People are willing to do incredible things, risk their children, risk their safety, risk pretty much everything to get out of that circumstance and to have uh, a brighter economic future. In the United States, which I find this to be fascinating, by the way, as a little nuance, if you were to listen to my leftist friends, I'm only going to speak to my leftist friends, if you were to listen to them on a daily basis, you would think that the United States of America was the, the third rung of purgatory by the way they speak of it. Horrible racism, horrible this, horrible that, never a positive word said. But in this instance, that, that the children and families from South America are literally kicking in the doors and doing illegal things to come to this purgatory, we should all be on board and enable them to do that. Those, that cognitive dissonance is just amusing to me. But nonetheless, because of those economic circumstances, all these human beings um, want to come to the United States because the truth is, despite what the leftist rhetoric is, the United States is just bang and awesome. All right. Problems. Yes. Always going to be problems. We're going to live with those problems for eternity because utopic leftist ideas are just that. They're, they're fantasy fiction. Problems. Yes. But bang and awesome. The best place ever. No doubt about it. Anybody says differently is intellectually dishonest. So you want to come to this country? I totally get that. I've been to South America many times. Those people are, are every bit as human as me, every their ki kids matter just as much as my kids. All that stuff is a given in my mind. Um, and the fact that they want to come to the United States is something I completely understand. In fact, greatly empathize with. And if and, and let me just put this on the tape just to show you how much I've thought about this. If I were in their circumstances, I do not think I would be making different decisions because I love freedom. I know what kind of personality I have and I think I would be worth the risk for the opportunity for both me and the future of my children. That's, that's what I think is an intellectually honest description of those human beings and the plight and the circumstances that they're in. Okay. Now another spoke of the wheel of this, I'm going to articulate. Now you have the United States of America, a sovereign country, a country of 370 million plus people or whatever the case may be, completely has a right to be sovereign. In fact, cannot survive without borders, language, culture, but specifically borders or else what is a country? And I know there are a ton of leftists out there that say we need to dissolve borders. I don't think they've thought that through. The level of chaos and, and not goodness that comes with that, it doesn't, doesn't make any circumstances better. It makes things worse. So assuming you're a person, you know, an adult who still understands the need for sovereign borders, the United States have, has every right, has ab absolutely every moral right. And I'm not talking about legal right. 
because you made a mention of the difference between legality and, and morality, and I completely agree with you in more ways than you even understand. But I think the United States has a moral right. So I want to be clear on this. They have a moral right to a border. And they have a moral right to defend that border. In, in a similar way to the fact that if, if, a, if a husband has a family and he has a door, he has a moral right to defend that door. He has a moral right to say, this is my family on the one side of the door, this is the world on the other side of the door. For any reason, lots have come to mind, protection, economic viability, survival, whatever the case may be. It is not immoral for that man to stop people at the threshold of that door. That is not an immoral thing. So that's the case I'm making. That bears out for a nation as well. Some approaches to solving that problem more moral than other approaches. And in lies the rub, right? That's, that's the elephant in the room. That's where I hope there's disagreement among me and you. I don't really know if you're open borders person. I actually presume after watching a lot of your videos that you're not, but that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about that. And that's where the emphasis, that's where the spotlight is. That's where all the disagreement is. And I think that's fair. I think if the argument were to be there in good faith with people that are actually intending to have that conversation for real and not intending to use some emotional issue to blood, you know, bludgeon people over the head or exploit things or, you know, any number of things like that. I think if the issue was genuinely thought of that way, then that would be fair. I, I, I really believe that that would be a fair assessment, but that's not what's happening. My solution to the exploitation of people the exploitation of children, the disenfranchisement of the weak, is to go to the source of the problem. If I were a medical practitioner and a, and a patient came to me with cancer, band-aids is what I think the left is speaking of. And what I'm speaking of here is diagnosing the cancer, figuring out where is the cancer coming from, and then strategically coming up with a plan of going to war with that cancer or fighting that cancer or, or um, unearthing that cancer from the body. So in the case of illegal immigration, what do we know? We know that there's all kinds of economic uh, shadiness going on in South America in this particular instance. That's where the predominant number of immigrants are coming from. We know that those policies, those economic policies, are pretty much leftist policies. They're big state, huge government, huge corruption, socialist, um, oligarchy, just horribleness, drug cartels. That is actually the problem with the illegal immigration. The rest of it, symptoms of the problem. That is the real problem. And so people that aren't interested in talking about that or, or glossing over that or, or acting like that's nothing, they don't actually care about this issue. They care about the emotional hysterics of the issue, but the issue itself is not of concern to them. To me, that's how you long-term solve the problem. That's how you, you keep nation states healthy. That's how you give people opportunity. That's how all people are humanized and respected. Not by flooding a nation state with disenfranchised people, economically disenfranchised people, which by the way, this is the state of things right now. These people come here uh, without legal citizenship, which means they're in the black market, they're in the shadows of society. That means they're very, very easily exploited. And I, I find it disturbing that most of the people that are exploiting them are the exact same people that are crying about the, the humanity of this issue. Again, red flag to me. So what you have here is a lot of people of Hispanic descent, um, Latino descent, and they come here and they do all kinds of, of jobs and things that are kind of off the books where you can pay them like whatever, whatever kind of arrangement you get, which they're willing to prostate themselves before their circumstances because they, it's, it's worlds better than where they came from, but that's still exploitation. That's still exploitation of the powerful. I made mention in my last video that I would drive through predominantly leftist states, leftist neighborhoods, all through California. And what you essentially are seeing there, you know, this is the thing that nobody wants to see out of sight, out of mind, is you're seeing a form of slavery. You're seeing a form of slavery where these people have no options. They're out there doing all this manual labor. And this is where the right and the left are both culpable because what the right had in the past is they just want to keep this gravy train of exploitative labor going. You got the um, 
you know, the Chamber of Commerce crowd and all that, the, the establishment GOP hacks that need to go away, clearly do not care about illegal immigration in this. They don't care about the human beings in this regard. And then the Democratic Party, they just see disenfranchised voters. They see wedge, wedge issues, race issues, just a way to stoke that whole race, class, gender, like fire they got going on, which is the entirety of their political strategy. So they, they, they look at these people as exploited sheep that can be politically wielded. Again, just as disgusting, just as evil. So the real humanitarian issue and the real human conversation is how do we stop the cancer of this problem from happening? How can these people stay in their nation states, which I'm sure they want to do, and thrive in their nation states? That's where we need to focus our attention. Not in villainizing people who want to have a border, not in telling everybody who actually is serious about that. You know, perhaps if that border is sealed, some of these thug nations, some of these left-wing South American nations have to take responsibility for the consequences of their policies instead of dumping, dumping the consequences of those policies on other nation states. That's, that's, that's the truth. I'll give you a, a hometown example of this. I love Mayor Giul Giuliani. I think he's a great man. But one of the things I think he gets a little too much credit for is cleaning up New York. And here's why. When Giuliani essentially drove them out of New York, they came down to towns like Reading and stuff like that. Now Giuliani got to say, look at this. There's less crime in New York. There's less this, there's less that. But that was just out of sight, out of mind. And that's what South America gets to do to the United States. They just get to shove that stuff off. And, and when Trump's talking, by the way, where he's right, is when he's talking about thugs and rapists and stuff. If you're not, you know, completely consumed with Trump derangement syndrome, you know what he's talking about there is you have cartels and horrific things being done to people in these muling operations, etc. And it's all fine and good because it's out of sight, out of mind. And the left should care about that. If you care about people and children and so on and so forth, you would care about that, but that's not politically expedient. But that's actually actually what's happening and that's actually the issue of illegal immigration that's really what we're talking about it's not as easily exploited for political reasons but that, that's what we're talking about so my point here is you can make a very very good and clear moral argument that defending the borders and being serious about that <clears throat> even though it's very very difficult to do and often very very difficult to see and i get that if you if you were to take that approach to solving the problem then long term you actually are solving the problem and you're actually helping people and you're actually stabilizing economies. As a side note, nobody likes to hear this, but a president is responsible and should be prioritizing his own citizens. And today everybody wants to be like, this is the most horrific thing in the world. How could you say something like that? I say something like that because I'm an adult and, and that's what adults say and think because it's true. I, I'd love to elaborate on this. I'm actually driving in this city right now, so I, I need to bail out. But I appreciate your video, Sister Danger. I really do. Thank you for the thoughtful commentary. I think you're the best of what The Breakfast Club is trying to do. Take care.